Welcome to Mastering Excel Functions. In this series, we'll be looking at a few of Excel's more popular functions. I'll provide proper syntax, real-world examples, and occasionally some hot tips and tricks. Today's function is count and its variants. We'll be looking at count, count a, count if, count ifs, and count blank. Let's get started. Our worksheet contains an array of fictitious persons and their equally fictitious email addresses. The syntax for count is equal count, open parentheses, value one, comma, value two, close parentheses. Notice that value two is enclosed in square brackets. That's Excel's way of telling you that this is an optional argument. The only required argument is value 1. Looking at our first example, we see that we can feed count a list of numbers and it does exactly what we expect. It counts them. It doesn't add them up. It counts them. In our second example, I've entered a series of names or textual data And when I hit enter, Excel returns a zero. Count does not work with text. Let's take a closer look at what happens when we provide a range as our value one argument. Our third example uses a range that contains text only, B3 to B151. Again, Excel returns a zero. But if we change the range to be A3 to A151, which contains numbers only, Excel returns the value of 149, which happens to be exactly the number of rows in the range provided. Notice that our range is only one column wide. What happens if we widen the array to include multiple columns? It doesn't appear that Excel is counting the cells, but rather the rows in our range. Can we use count across multiple columns effectively to count the number of columns in a range? Apparently not. Again, it seems to only count the number of rows. So we come to understand that count works best with a series of numbers or a range of numbers in a singular column. What if we had the need to count textual data? Or we wanted to count the number of columns in a range? Ah, this is where Count's cousin, Count A, comes to play. Count A works on both numeric and textual single column ranges. Using the same ranges, let's see what Excel returns if we use Count A. Count A with a series of numbers seems to work, but let's take a closer look at what happens when we give it a list of text values. Count A, Fred, Sally, and Marsha returns the number four. We have three names, but Excel has returned the number four. Notice that there's an extra comma in our formula. In this case, Excel seems to assume that there's more data to follow. Pro tip. Be careful with your commas. This is a commonly found error when troubleshooting formulas. So it looks as if count A will work with both numeric or textual data in a single column. But look what happens when we use a multi-column range with count A. As it happens, we have four columns in our range, and our range is 149 rows long. If we do the math, we can see that Excel is returning the number of cells in our range. And if we use count A across four columns with a single row, we get the number four, which is the number of cells in that range. So it seems that count A works with numeric or textual values, works with single column or multi-column ranges, 
but you must remember that it's going to count the number of cells in your range rather than the number of rows. Okay, moving on. Let's now look at count if. As you might have surmised, count if and its cousin count ifs work with conditions. These functions require both a range and a criteria. Looking at our examples, we can see that we can use count if on both numeric and textual data with both single and multi-column arrays. What if we wanted to know the number of times a certain value appears in our range, i.e. how many times does the number 15 show up in the range A3 through A151? As you would expect, Excel returns the value of 1. Similarly, if we look for the text Brian in our text range B3 through B151, Excel searches for, finds, and counts the number of times the text Brian shows up. In this case, one time. What if we search for text in a numeric range? As you can see, Excel returns the value of zero. I think we can assume the opposite is also true, i.e. looking for numbers in a text filled range will also produce a zero. Yep, we were right. We can, however, use a range that contains both numeric and textual data over multiple columns. For example, the range A3 colon D151 is four columns wide and contains both numeric and textual data. In our final COUNTIF example, we search across multiple columns to find that Brian appears four times, once in column B and three times in column C. I think it was in version 2007, though I could be wrong, that Microsoft started including what I call the plural functions. In an earlier video, I demonstrated the use of some ifs or some if s. Much like some ifs, count ifs allows for the use of multiple criteria and or multiple lookup ranges. Let's see how this works. Looking at the count if syntax, we see that it's looking for a pairing of criteria and criteria range, i.e. criteria range 1 and criteria 1 criteria range 2 and criteria 2. So at least one pairing is required, but you can have up to 127 range criteria pairings. Have fun with that. The important thing to remember is that all criteria ranges must be the same size in terms of rows and columns. In our first example, we look for Elizabeth in a multi-column range, A3, through D151. Excel returns three, and they all happen to be in column B. In our second example, we combine two pairings to narrow our search criteria. We're looking specifically for the number of Elizabeth North records. Criteria range one is B3 to B151. Criteria one is Elizabeth. Criteria range 2 is C3 to C151, and criteria 2 is north. Excel returns the value of 1. Let's test our formula by changing one of the Elizabeths to have the last name north. We can see Excel has counted two rows that now meet our criteria. Remember, when you have multiple pairings, your criteria ranges must all be the same size. As you can see in example three, when they aren't the same size, Excel throws a value error.
Let's finish up by looking at the count blank function. As you might guess, this function is going to return a value for the number of blank cells it finds within a range. Range is the only requirement of this function, and if there are no blank cells within our range, Excel returns a zero, as in our first example, using range A3 colon D151, which we know is a complete set of data. If we expand our range to include 10 blank rows, you see Excel returns the number 40. We have four columns in our range that have 10 blank rows, so it's counting the number of blank cells. Similarly, if we include only one column in our range, i.e. A3 colon A161, Excel returns the number 10. One column with 10 blank cells or 10 blank rows. Capish? In summary, today we looked at the count functions. Specifically, count, count A, count if, count ifs, and count blank. In our next video, we'll be checking out the if functions. That includes nesting ifs, if s or ifs, if error, and if an a. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, share with your friends, and leave me a comment below. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. Don't forget to check out our website where you can find other free stuff like seamless patterns, deco toners, illustrator brushes, and page borders. That's at www.lillizzy.net. Cheers!